Welcome to chapter two, session three. In this session, we're going to be working with our lists and a couple of new things with our formatting of our um, quotes, our block quotes, and um, a couple other things. We'll finish it up. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to cover is our formatting of our lists. So remember the list that we've talked about, our unordered lists, ordered lists, and our descriptive lists. Our ordered list and unordered lists have a, a symbol in front of them, a list style icon that they use. So our unordereds usually have a bullet of some type and our ordereds usually have a numbering system of some type. You can set that list style type individually, not only for the list itself, but for any nested lists inside of it. So that's kind of useful. You have to use that parent descendant style, which I'll show you in just a second, but you're gonna be using that to define, say, an outline form where you start with a Roman numeral, you go down to a capital letter, and then you end up with a digit. You can also use your own images via an URL to make it so that you can make it really personal what those images are going to be. One of the other things that you can also do is define inside or outside for the position of the bullet. And if you look at the picture here, you can see that the outside means that the bullet and all of the text is um, the bullets outside of all of the text, whereas inside means the bullet is lined up with the second line. It kind of has a hanging indent and then it goes down. So that's inside versus outside. But let's look at this in code. We're gonna start by setting up our list styles for our run page. So we're gonna come into our TSS styles website or a, a CSS page. And we're gonna just reference the list that is in the run page. So let's first look at the run page. So right now we have our basic ordered list and everything in our ordered list are numbers. And we're like, I don't really want them to all be numbers. I want some of them to be Roman numerals and alphas and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is set up my article and my syllabus section so that this only affects the things that are inside my syllabus, and my first ordered list. And in that case, I'm going to set my list style type equal to upper Roman, because I want Roman numerals. So you can see everything got changed to up Roman numerals, but we didn't want everything to change. We only wanted the first one to be this and then everything under it. But remember, nested items will automatically pick up the, the um, style of the thing above it. So we need to do a second article and say an ordered list that is inside of an ordered list. That will be our second tier down. And we want those to be upper alpha. In that case, it's going to make them uppercase alphabetical letters. A, 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 B, C, D. And remember, the third list down is now absorbing from that second tier. So we need to make one more where we can do that third tier. We're going to do O, L, O, L, O, L. So our third level of our nesting. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and make it a decimal. Okay, by making it a decimal, I now have that refresh. Oops, I have to say first. Oh, there we go. I have my Roman numeral, my uppercase alphabetical alphabet, and then my decimal. And that way we were able to make this look like a normal outlining with those three levels. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the markers from our nav list. So our nav lists right now have these um, bullets and we don't want the bullets. We want it to just be the words. So we are going to change the rules in our nav list so that it does not have any um, bullets. So we're gonna come over to our navigation styles here and our unordered list that is going in there because the unordered list is where we're getting the bullets from. And we are gonna say list style type, oops. And we are gonna say none, whoops, none, semicolon. And what that's going to do is remove those bullets. See how those bullets ran away? That way we were able to um, get rid of those because in all honesty, this list doesn't need to have the bullets. It's not really necessary. The last thing we're gonna do is affect our, um, our homepage 
here, and we're going to be changing the unordered list here. So this is an unordered list of running, cycling, and swimming. And in this case, we want to have that unordered list actually use the images of our run icon, bike icon, and swim icon. So what we're going to do at this point is we are going to go to our list styles section, because this is one of our list styles, and we're going to refer to the article. And then we're going to look for specifically that about TSS um, named section. And we want unordered lists that are inside of that. In this case, I'm going to say list style image, and I'm going to set that equal to a URL with parentheses, and I'm going to be putting the run icon PNG in there. Then we're going to save that, we're going to refresh, and now they have all set to the run icon. For right now, that'll be fine. We'll be fixing that in a little bit. Now we're going to discuss margins and padding, and it's really important that you recognize where margins and padding exist in, in relationship to the content. So the idea is you have a subset of content, whatever that element may be, and there is a border that goes around that content. If you decided to add a border, you can do that, and we'll talk about borders as things go on. But for right now, we're not worrying about actually drawing the border. Just visualize that the border exists there. In between the border and the text is your padding. Outside of the border, before any other items, is your margin. So margin goes from wherever the outside of your other related items is to the border, that little section there. And then in between the border and the text itself is your padding. So that's the difference between margins and padding. Of course, the border is the thing that goes in the middle between your margin and padding. Any of these three, you can define with a size, and you can define them as top, right, bottom, left, four items with no commas between them. Those are gonna be your, your top, right, bottom, left, clockwise around. Or you can individually reference margin top, margin left, margin right, margin bottom separately. You can also do just top and bottom and left and right as two items. If your left and right and top and bottom are equal, to each other, so left and right are the same and top and bottom are the same. You can do those as two items with no comma in between. You can set any of them to whatever given size that you want, and that's usually given in pixels because that's gonna be a solid number that's gonna stay the same no matter how big or small relative size of your box is. So let's go look at how margins and padding look in code. We're now going to affect our padding in our navigation styles and we're gonna be adding a left side padding of 5%. Those are gonna be inside of our navigation styles. So let's go find those, here we are. And we're gonna put that in the navigation styles with the unordered list, because it's not the nav section we wanna add the padding to, it's gonna be the list that we're adding the padding to, so the unordered list. So we're gonna add a padding left, and we're gonna add it at five pixels. And you can see, see how it moved that back over? So it added a five pixel padding between the outside of the element and the object itself, but it kind of just moved them all over instead of having them centered or wherever they were beforehand. Next, we're gonna be adding a um, top margin to each of our items in our links. So what we wanna do is, um, is kind of spread these out and add a little bit more of a top margin. So in this case, it's not going to be the UL directly that we want to reference. It's going to be each new group. So let's go look real quick at the way that our navigation bar is set up. So as you can see, I have a couple of items here. These are the four that go with this page. And then I have a class called new group that says that after swimming from active down to the USA triathlon is all kind of a group of items. And then after the um, USA Triathlon, it goes down, or the triathlon, it moves down a little further from there and shows a couple of other ones. We want those to be separated. So what we wanna do is add a margin to just the top of a new group section to add kind of a secondary um, line at that point. So in this case, we are gonna reference, it's in the nav section, it's in the UL section, and it's in a line item, but only the line items that have a, um, um, a class of new group. 
and we are going to add a margin top and make that 20 pixels. And what you're going to see is it's going to add this extra space. It added a 20 pixel margin to the top of just these two cells because those are the ones that we called new group. And you see how it kind of just broke it out a little bit more and just made it look a little nicer to be able to separate that out. Next, we're going to be changing the margin space around the block quotes. And these are the block quotes over here that we're going to be playing with. So in this case, we're going to go find our block quote style which is up here with our aside. And we have an aside block quote that we have the color set right here. We're gonna go ahead and add in some margins for that. So we're gonna give a margin of 20 PX for the top and bottom and five PX for the left and right. So when you do a margin, the way we talked about it was you have a top, um, left, bottom, right, I'm sorry, top, right, bottom, left, clockwise, um, around if you wanted to put in four of those. If you only enter two, it's going to do top and bottom and left and right. So those are going to be the two ways we can do it because often top and bottom and left and right are the two that we want to do. And as you saw, when I clicked the refresh button, it made the margins on the left and the right much smaller, but it still left a large space between them. So the top and the bottom margins are going to be set to 20. So when we look at pseudo classes and pseudo elements, sometimes we want to refer to the first item on a list or the child that exists of another item or something like that, where it's in relationship to something else. So it's a relationship between classes or a relationship between elements. We can do specific pseudo classes and pseudo elements. So we can have the root item, we can have any empty items, ch children, last child, first child. We also have the option of last of type and first of type, and then nth of type, and um, that will give us the option of, and then nth last of type, the first, second, and third. You'll see this when we work through the code. When we do pseudo elements, we can do those as either the first letter or the first line or before and after when we want to add content directly to a specific position of that element. When you are doing things such as quotes, you want to insert a quote, like an actual quote symbol, like a double quote. Um, but you want to do it in every place that there's a quote and you don't want to have to manually type it in because you don't want it to actually be part of the text. So you can add with CSS a piece of quote before and after, or any content thereafter, um, to an element itself. When it comes to hyperlinks, we can also refer to the visited links or the active link or the link that is being hovered over. Hover actually works with everything. So any element as it's hovered, you can change what it looks like as it's being hovered over by using the hover pseudo class that's a dynamic pseudo class. So let's go look and see what this one looks like in code. Okay, so now we're going to come back to this list style here where we did our running and we're going to talk about how we can do the first item, the second and the third of using different items. We've talked about using the first of type. So in this case, we are going to do an article, an unordered list, and then we are going to say the list item first of type. So the first one of that type we're going to be setting to the run icon. At this point, if I refresh it, the other two icons have gone away because the only one that the run icon is applied to is the first of type. Next, we're going to do the same type of thing for the second item, but we're going to use the second of type, which isn't a straight name. It's just nth of type. Um, and we're going to be putting in the number two inside there to be able to say this is the second one. Now in this case I don't want the run icon because the second one is the bike icon. So we can refresh that and you'll see that we put the little bicycle guy there and now we can do the same thing for the third and of type the third one and we want to do the swim icon. And now we have different icons for each of the three different ones that we want. So when we talked about generating content and being able to do that little thing with the quotes with our um, our, 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 dynamic, our our block quotes, um, 
This is how you can do it with the content. Sometimes you want to just add new content. This is done sometimes if you want to have a link to something, but then you want to have in parentheses what's the actual href of that object. Or if you wanted to have um, your menu when you hover over it, add a little brackets or some sort of change as you go along and add some content to it. You can add content using the before and after with a um, pseudo class and being able to add the content. So before and after allows you to add content either before or after any given element. The content properties, you can have attributes that you can use in there. You can have specific text that you just typed in. You can have your open and close quote or your no open quote, no close quote, which removes those quotation marks if necessary, if they've been defined previously. You can also display the content of a URL in specifically in that location. So this is how you can generate content with your CSS. We're next going to be adding some pseudo classes. So in this case, we want our navigation system to be um, the same color, whether it's been clicked or not. As you can see right now, I've got these have been clicked before, but none of the rest of these have. And so there's still that blue instead of the um, red for being clicked. We actually don't want any of that to happen. We, we want it to be um, the color while you're clicking it, while you're hovering over it. And then we want it to be the same color as it would be. And we want to get rid of that line because the lines are kind of annoying. So we're going to go to our navigation styles back up here. And we are going to add a nav then the unordered list that's underneath the nav, then the list item that's underneath the other unordered list. And then we're going to look for the A anchor tag and the link, link, excuse me. That's gonna be the link itself for an A tag. We also wanna have the same color scheme for if it's already been visited. So we're gonna do a nav, unordered list, list item, a and visited and that says that this is either a regular link that has never been visited or a link that has been visited and we want to set that color equal to an rgb of 151 whoops sorry there it is um 151 comma 151 comma 151 which is um kind of a grayish and then we're going to set our text decoration. Remember, our text decoration is the underlining. And we're going to set it to none because we don't want any underlines. OK, now we've made this nice gray color and we've gotten rid of that underline. Now we're going to do our nav list for when it is being hovered over or it's in the act of changing. So we're going to do our nav list. We're going to do our UL, our LI, and our A hover because that's going to say when we're hovering. And we're going to do our nav list, UL, LI, and when our link is active, which means we are currently in the process of clicking that link. We are going to set our color equal to an RGB of this hot pink color of 255. Um, 64 255 and we're going to be setting our text decoration uh, back to underline so that you can tell that that's the one that you're going over so now as I move my mouse over it you can see it turns this hot pink up until the point that you've clicked it and then it goes back to normal so you can see as you're moving over these so let's talk about those quotation marks this is the code that you're going to do to add your quotes. First off, you need to add the quotes to the object that you're going to be changing. If you want to use special quotes, in this case, the 201C and 201D are those um, kind of curly quotes that go with Times New Roman. They kind of, you know, curve a little bit as opposed to being straight up and down. Um, 218 or, or 2018 and 2019 are the single curly bro uh, quotes if you want to be using those. When you do, you need to add the quotes attribute first to your object before you can add the before pseudo class. Um, so in this case, if I have an aside block quote, I'm going to be adding the quotes to the aside block quote first. So the aside block quote knows what the quotes are. 
And then I'm going to be entering these two other style rules to be able to add an open quote before my content and a close quote after my content. Let's go see what that looks like. We're now going to be inserting those block quotes here um, around our comment section so that it looks like we have actual quotes around it. First thing we're going to do is inside of our aside and block quote, we are going to tell it what kind of quotes we want to use. Quotes. And we are going to be using the slash 201C and the slash, whoops, slash 201D as our open and close quotes. Those are going to be kind of a curly quote in Times New Roman that we're going to be using. And next, we're going to be going ahead and setting up actually adding those quotes in. So we need to add a content before and a content after. So we're going to do an aside block quote, sorry, block quote um, before. And we're going to be setting it as content equal to open quote. And our font family, we are going to be using Times New Roman. And our font size, we're going to do 1.6 to make it a little bigger than the other sizes. And our font weight, um, we're going to be setting to bold because we want them to be bold. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. We've got our first quotes. We don't have back quotes, though, yet. And as you can see, they're that pretty little curly. We're going to go ahead and set the one on the other side. So remember, we're affecting the, the content of the open quote or the close quote. Whoops. Open quote. Um, we're going to make that close quote, and we're going to put that after. So we can have one quote before, one quote after. And now you can see we've got our pretty little curly quotes that go along with our comments. Okay, so that's the end of chapter two. Now we're gonna talk about the assignments. So first, the review assignment. The review assignment for this, go to the HTML2 um, folder and go ahead and grab the review files. And those are gonna be following the directions that are in the book. Remember, follow the directions in order. Don't forget to add your name and your date to the comment section of every change page that you change. When you are finished, it should look exactly like the image to the left. Um, or the image that's in your book because you're doing, everybody's doing exactly the same thing. It should all look the same. Be sure to add comments as necessary. Make sure you zip it, submit it into D2L. The second project for chapter two is going to be a classical theater website. In this case, you are again going to follow the steps in order. You're going to be adding your name and date to the comment section. You're going to be building the main page of this classical theater site, and it's going to look very similar to um, the page that's to the right here. Make sure, again, you include your comments, zip everything up, and submit it into D2L. Then we'll see chapter, case four. So your case four is going to be your fun project for chapter two. It's going to be a great Lakescape Lodge website. So it's a hotel B&B &B type thing, um, which seems appropriate for Montana. You're gonna be following the steps in order and you're gonna be building your, your CSS. However, you honestly have free reign to do whatever you want with this page. As long as you do everything that's required you're fine. So pick your own colors, pick your own fonts, pick your own sizes. There's two web fonts that come in this folder. You can pick one of those or you can pick a web font from somewhere else, but you have to pick a web font, install it and use that as well. So if you have another web font you want to play around with, you're welcome to do that. If you want to use the two that are in this in this folder, you're welcome to. There are some graphics that are already included, but you can choose your own graphics if you'd like. You can use their copy text and you can make up your own. So have fun with this. This should look absolutely nothing like the picture to the left. Um, make sure you include comments throughout, zip your stuff up and submit it to D2L. All right, so that's the end of chapter two. Remember, all assignments are due Sunday by 11.30 p.m. I don't accept late work, so you've got to get it in. Um, you've got a week to know about it. There's plenty of time as long as you schedule yourself and get it done. So please do not call me at 1145 and say I didn't get it finished. Get everything done, turned in. You have to do all three projects. So the review, the case one and the case four. 
Remember the um, chapter two quiz, which again is very long, but you can use your book and you can take it twice. So do the best you can, um, take it, look through it, figure out where you made mistakes, take it again. The book is there and all the answers are in the book. So you can do this. You can. There's no excuse for a bad grade on a quiz. And also remember those chapter two quick checks. There's like seven to nine questions at the end of each session. Make sure you get those done, write them in a Word document and submit them and get them turned in. Have a fabulous week and I will talk to you next time.